Is you recording on yours? Um, I can start recording on this computer. So I think I made you host. Anyway, it says recording on my side. Between us, we I think we've got it. Have you got recording? Yeah. Record you to sure? this computer. I yeah, think you need to make me co-host next time, not host. Okay. <laughs> well, you yeah. are the gracious host, so uh, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. So, 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 uh, let's talk dragons. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm already loving this. I think we've got a little audience among the dragon kind who want to see if we speak highly of them or if we're naughty and speak poorly of them. Exactly. I'm just going to test the settings. I'm dead, I'm dead low. It's probably the dragons are doing this. Okay. Yeah, oh, well. let's carry on. I'll try and, I'll try and open my ears more. Okay, good, good, good. So, um, well, um, how did you first come across these guys? Let's share that part of our journey. What um, was that, sorry? Uh, how did you come across dragons the first time? How were you introduced to them? First time, before I was born, <laughs> I was looking for a, I was looking for the aspect that was in this body so I could swap. And I was with Doman, my dragon shapeshifting human. And uh, we were flying about and we saw the, we, we did the exchange, but we did it a bit late and uh, I got suspected brain damage. So that oh, was, wow. he was Doman, my protector, and he, he was there from day one. And uh, the only problem is, as a kid, when people used to bully you because you couldn't speak properly, I used to send the dragon and he used to do a bit of damage for me, so I was a bit naughty, but there you well, go. Well, you, you've got bodyguards, you might as well use them. Oh, well, how interesting. Yeah. Well, my, my first introduction to the dragons was a little bit different to you. So, first of all, I, it, this happened in phases. So as I was remembering more, I started interacting with them more. Uh, first one was a shamanic journey or a trance or a meditation where I saw um, a dragon aspect that uh, would be my counterpart, feminine dragon. And so immediately the first thing that struck me was how gentle and how soft and how sensual their energy is. Mm. So that uh, image of aggression and rah, let's burn everything. No, no, no. That seems to be a distortion. They are incredibly empathic mm, and loving creatures. Unless you get on the wrong side when they're the, the flames and uh, all that comes into play. So after that first introduction, I got an invitation to a dragon party. And uh, I was not expecting what transpired. Um, it started all very, very classy, say a black tie event, everybody on their best behavior, up to the point where they brought out the syrup. And it seems as some extract from a plant, a flower. And they love this stuff. And I did, I did partake. And very, very quickly, everything um, basically devolved into a gypsy party with bonfires and trash all over the place and giggling and laughter. And that was that was my first real introduction to uh, our local dragons. So the ones that are mostly interacting with humanity. Later on, I discovered one of my own um, primary aspects, or dare I say favorite aspects, is um, a black dragon from the primordial void, uh, which uh, I use uh, most frequently for my healing work. The dragon's breath, it is incredible in just breaking stuff up, disintegrating them to the level required. And also, it's always good, as you really beautifully put, to have dragon bodyguards. No one would like to mess with you. 
So that, that was the beginning of my story. So somewhat different. It seems you came in knowing what's what. I didn't know. I had to go through the whole. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know everything because when you're coming for me, uh, from where you come from, you can't hold everything inside this body. It just it's not big enough to hold it all. In. So true. So mm. true. And then where do you stop? Like, say you have access to everything. Where do you even begin? What do you download? What do you keep? What do you throw away? It's a dilemma. It I personally, I found that the easiest thing is not to think, uh, relieve this poor organ from unnecessary burden. When you need, download, use it, and then release back into the wild, like a catch and release fishing program. <laughs> uh, so initially, before I could sort of download stuff effectively there was this terrible suffering i really mean it was the worst thing i've ever experienced about what is the answer who am i where am i going what the hell is going on here and there are no <laughs> answers in the physical reality until you finally make that connection to source and you get to a place where you go ah oh, what was the question? Who even cares? I'm happy. And th that seemed to stick. So this, um, the result of this, so for our esteemed audience listening, the result of this connection to source is unparalleled relief. The dissolution of all suffering. It's all illusion anyway. So, yeah, that's interesting. That it seems we, we, we would probably agree on this. Uh, let the poor monkey brain rest. <laughs> the, the, the good thing about the, the dragon I've had, I, I used to say it was a shape-shifting dragon at three or four. I used to know him at three or four. <laughs> um, and he, he can, luckily he can shape-shift into human and not human. Uh, I believe it was a, a Merlin dragon, so, which is good. Yeah. So, not all, um, obviously, not all dragons are good. I fought a few in my time. Yeah. Well, that's a fantastic point. It seems like um, all other archetypes of life. So we're humanoid. Uh, two arms, two legs, a head and a torso. This seems to be one of the common archetypes of uh, vessels. There are many types, including dragon. Uh, or then their less evolved type, uh, which would be the dra draconians. Um, and then there seems to be great variation among this archetype. Some uh, have larger wings and big pot bellies and long tails. Some seem to be completely serpentile. So it seems yeah, the, some the have ones got wings that are... and some haven't, haven't they? Oh, yes. Mm. And this uh, lust for treasure or perhaps it could be lust for cheesecake, things sweet and shiny. It seems to be a weakness of theirs. In my experience, they, they love the syrup. Lots of legend of them going dark or um, descending from uh, righteousness, becoming hoarders of energy, of wisdom, of treasure. Mm. So very much so a sentient kind, like any other. And when free will exists, there's always the possibility of going wrong. Definitely. Definitely. So the, the the first one of the first healing I was doing with dragons. Uh, this patient had very back a lot of back pain and I couldn't shift it. So all of a sudden my aspects came in, my Hermes aspect, and came me back to Atlantis. And so we're going into the Atlantis thing. There was I have a seven or nine wizards in the temple. And every wizard had a different colour. I was purple. Uh, you might have been there. You never know. <laughs> it could be. And we all was creating a, a conjuring spell of dragon fire. And it was like a round ball of energy. It didn't burn, but it was one of the most powerful energies in the universe. And we, we, we saw this. We were creating dragon fire in the healing room like I was in Atlantis. And then I poured it into the back, and it was like a round ball of energy of called dragon fire. So that was me Atlantean connection, uh, bringing in, going back to that past life of all these wizards or pre high priestess. 
in the temple, creating the uh, basically uh, bringing in dragon fire. Where did we go wrong? It <laughs> seems somewhere along the way in the Atlantean times, something really went sideways. What did we do? That's one of the things I'm trying to recall. It seems interaction with Earth Mother went really, really wrong. Um, I just, uh, it's one of those things, it has a, a great amount of charge for me. It just brings tears every time I want to go to it. So it's probably one of the last shadows that I have to resolve. Well, uh, I know the story how Atlantis went, failed, and no one's ever said it. So shall I tell you? Oh, please. We were employing too many outsiders and the dark forces corrupted us. Now we used to have like a shield of energy around, to, like a protection, and they got in and the dark ones were coming in to take our knowledge. Our knowledge was in a cave, it was a crystal cave. And we ended up, and I, I still remember doing it, we destroyed Atlantis ourselves and we portaled outside out of it. And we killed a lot of people doing that, but it was far worse than having all the knowledge of the universe in that crystal cave. Uh, okay, that rings true. It was far worse for them to have that than us, because we'd lost, we'd already, they were inside. And I remember, and we had to put crystals in each part of the cave to basically create the, the explosion, basically. The crystals created, it was like a very sad time. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And then we portal to Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. And and then, then the story went on. Oh my. Uh that was that was a block for me. Um in, mm. in in my energy, in my soul. It was too traumatic, uh, too upsetting. Thank you for it, sharing. It is that. one so of the most traumatic things a, a soul could ever have, I think. Yeah. Uh but some of the crystals did survive. Yeah. Um, we did teleport those guys. Our buddies are now in subterranean cavities. Yeah. Recently, yeah. one of them um, made contact. Hey, what the actual hell? We've been waiting. <laughs> where, 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 where have you been? Like I said, it, okay. it's, it's a bit like your house on fire. What do you rescue <laughs> quick? <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Well, see, that gives me a lot of hope. Um, initially, there's there's lots of stories going around in the public, in the, let's say, New Age culture, uh, that, oh, Atlanteans were evil, rah, 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 and they, and they really effed up. But it mm. seems we were deceived, some knowingly and some completely unknowingly. But this makes sense that our noble ancestors, us and other, other vessels, said, okay, we, 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 we will take death before dishonor. That sounds true. That is the human way. Yeah. That is our truth. Okay, how it, we, beautiful. It, one of the crystals was crystal gold. And that's what we put on the pyramids. It was telecommunication system. What people don't realize, Atlantis wasn't... We had a lot of lands in different places in the universe. Uh, and we were trying to communicate back to them, basically. I remember the cave. Seems mm. it was the only place I, I used to hang out. <laughs> I didn't venture much in the city. It was all the time in the cave with my crystals and uh, my little wonky gadgets. And so, um, but, uh, well, I'm very grateful for you reminding. You just gave me back my last soul shard. <laughs> well, you, you could go, people don't realize, you could portal anywhere in that cave. You could do all sorts of things in that cave. It wasn't oh, just man. a library. Yeah. Amazing stuff. Perhaps it would be appropriate to bring it back, mm. uh, make it available to mankind. The new generation of people being born seem to be ready, or we're mm. very, very close to it, where the kids are immune to many distortions that, say, for example, our parents and grandparents suffered from. So something has shifted and evolved in the collective energy of humanity. I think yeah. it's time, really, for the new golden age. And there's so many beautiful people out there probably hearing what we're saying 
and they would agree it probably mm. is time well it, i don't know if you know but most of the dinosaur bones are dragons <laughs> yes, definitely yes 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 and the last time they, they're still here but not many but the last time they were in numbers was seven the reset of 1736 like a mud flood took a lot of them and they took the uh, trees down and every they used to live on the trees on the giant chip trees that we don't have anymore yeah ay 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 so so let's talk about uh, the naughty dragons the ones that have gone wrong how do you even go about dealing with something like this that breathes fire and does not respect you how do you how do you transmute its energy and put it back on a path of evolution well the bad ones the bad dragons yes the bad boys yeah <laughs> some so i've heard some were saying that the orican last week was created by water dragons it wasn't created by water dragons it was created with some tech in the sea and some on antarctic and uh, the dragons last week helped that orican to slow down a hell of a lot they, they, they cooled the sea and they blew the wind the opposite way and they created like a vortex over the lands to slow it down. And people don't realise the dragons are there still to help us. Uh, but the bad ones, it's not many of them and they tend to be, uh, I think they're programmed, I think they've, I think the, uh, they've got implants in them that have, have made messed up their mind, mind control they mind controlled them basically definitely mind control them and uh, I fought I fought one last week so it's as simple as that also this this is a bit iffy with me because I didn't really believe it but I have a feeling I fought a uh, fallen angel last week in the Oricon. oh so, yes 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 that, that 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 I don't know how to do that, <laughs> and that's obviously not me. That's my aspect, my higher vibrational aspect. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I know there was uh, when I when I was going into an an an, an implant factory in in, uh, in dimension four, uh, <clears throat> I actually went into a portal and there was dark dragons and they were on Orion protecting Orion, so am I? I have I got the rule to actually repair them are, are they dark anyway but i have a feeling that they're mind controlled so probably yes. the best way is to uh, repair the mind there to release the implants in them that's probably the best way agreed so, agreed the, yeah. the ones, that's diversion um, in, into things that people don't talk about <laughs> oh well well that's that's what we're here to do talk about things that nobody does in a respectful Hello. way so um a lot of them seem to have been traumatized yeah and and so captured and then basically used for target practice mm. or basically mm, tortured severely to such a degree that most of them now are very reluctant to take physical form anymore yeah so with the with the advancement of human civilization and technology as we have um, devolved and lost our connection to spirit it seems they have become more reluctant to take the physical form but m every major civilization has records of these um, being physical beings at will the ones that I have come across that were um, let's say negative not doing um, help causing harm were among these traumatized ones uh, sort of locked in a a fight or flight state where the anger and f and and war mode was switched on and got stuck uh, and it's, it's it's difficult dealing with that kind of intensity um so i mentioned that they they must respect you so you must hold your own um and then it takes um immense energy to wash the heart and then it seems the energy is normalized but this this nicely aligns with what you've said repair uh, and I, I think some of it is also to do with what humans have done to them in the centuries that i i the emerald order took me back to a hundred thousand years ago and i was on a mountain and i could see four trees that were about 50 miles high and lay on the trees with dragons that's where their home was now people think mountains always 
They used to live okay. on the trees. So, yeah. Yeah. That that makes perfect sense with the with the format of nature. Flying beings find something pointy and high. What better than a massive tree for a massive mm. dragon? Yeah, and so we've oh. destroyed their home. There's no no suitable place for them to really live naturally and happily. Mm. Oh wow. So it seems that all sentient kind can benefit from healing and repair, uh, dragons included. Yeah. And so that whole thing of that they are evil, even even today, you see movies being made. Oh, let's go slay a dragon. Uh, first of all, dude, you don't want to do that. You don't want to approach an angry dragon uh, unless you can withstand the dragon's breath or the fire. Mm -hmm. And even in that condition, if you do not have integrity, it's a lose. It's a lost battle. They do yeah, seem yeah. to remember, at some level, the light of source. And for most beings that have gone dark, this is the greatest uh, promise of healing. Uh, it seems to pacify them, at least for a moment, for them to sit down and listen to what you are presenting. Yeah. That promise of reconnection to the beloved source. And once they are sure that your offer is genuine, that you're not here to steal from them, to hurt them, uh, to abuse their wisdom, or all that negative stuff, then they seem to really cooperate. It takes a whole different format. But this is so true for 85% of the negative stuff I've ever come across. Mm. Uh, so I suppose even among the dragons, we have those who are really too far gone, uh, beyond repair. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, um, a dragon's breath. Let's talk a little bit about this. Um, so, I use this invoking the energy of that aspect of self that is a dragon. Uh, working with the flow of prana or chi or life force in the body, like most magical workings. It's a combination of movement and breath. And of course, consciousness. You can yeah. bring in yeah. the purity of emotion. So everything aligns and then you can evoke this energy. Um, I've used it in um, my own modality, the Dragon Reiki. So very much so, it takes in elements from the Pranayama, uh, from Qigong, so the breath and movement, but then also the connection to the primordial realm, primordial void. It works mm. really well. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering how um, you have experienced the Dragon's Breath uh, would you would you share share what what you have okay. done with this? <laughs> I I have three dragon possibilities. I've got my protector called Doman, yeah. So I can connect with him, and I think we have been close for many a year, if you get what I mean. Many 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 years, man. Then is uh, I'm part of the warrior dragon class. I can bring them in as well. So actually it's four. So I can use, well I don't use them, I can ask them to call an elk. And that's on a dragon planet sort of thing. That, that's probably on the magic dragon, I won't be surprised. Which I had a dream last night and you were there, so... And I couldn't get your name right. <laughs> Which means that when you, the dragon planet is where magic sparks created. So as a wizard, wizards need a magic spark in it. Once one of our aspects has collected it, we are the conscious of the lands determine whether you're worthy and obviously I think my dragon actually went there, my dragon clan went there initially and we were past the, I've got access, I have destroyed their building using it accidentally once so you've got to be careful how you use it. There's also a rainbow crystal dragon, one of my earliest that uh, I don't know the name, doesn't want me to call the name but uh, she's got the knowledge of the birth of the souls which is quite Quite interesting how the souls came to this this uh, universe and uh, the, the other one is I've got access to the emerald dragons and the emerald dragons are linked to the emerald order they're like 15 or 15 16 D and they've they've they have they couldn't come here for a long hundred thousand years they couldn't come here because the density was too low but they are now here 
So I can connect to all these uh, dragons there. If I partly merge with them and I blow the energy into the patient's auric field, and what that does is that, like prana or panic or chi energies, it's exactly all the same, it builds up the auric field and it clears any parasites, any, any implants, yeah? So that's how I do it. And I, you, when you're blowing it, you can feel that energy coming out. It's different than normal. Yes, yes absolutely. And you actually absolutely. feel, you become the dragon in a way. You actually become a, I haven't merged, I haven't looked like one yet. <laughs> but, but you feel like you are the dragon, definitely. Uh, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? You read my mind. You said what I was thinking and feeling. So I think we, we are we're experiencing the same thing, that energy yeah. of dragon's breath. An element of worthiness and integrity seems mm. to be incredibly important. Yeah. Um, many practitioners among humankind, and they have this lust and hunger, disease-like hunger uh, for power. And so mm. they look at spirituality as just another means to power, focused on money, on sex, on um, transient pleasure. These people are never granted this honor. Mm. So they are evaluated for their integrity from the other side. And so many, many rites of passage uh, focus on this integrity. So it's very, very good that this is mentioned. Uh, mm. Humankind can be bribed, uh, but spirit and evolved beings, they care about who you are and what you are going to do with it. They will not hand you over something that you will use to cause harm. And then becoming the dragon. I love that. That's one of the beauties of human form. So although because of a, a drop in our vibration, our physical structure has become solid or dense, we cannot shift the cellular structure uh, as at ease, although this happens slowly, but still energetically we can morph. This is one of the properties that makes um, humans rather unique. We can embody 20 different aspects in a single healing session mm -hmm. and use certain technologies from different beings that we are all at once. Uh, I think that's, that's part of the reason we are so interesting and harvested for our codes. Many beings don't have this naturally. So while we're down here on Earth playing this game of dumbass, like uh, our eyes are tied closed, our ar arms and legs are restrained, and we're flopping about like worms in the dirt, of course another being is going to come say, oh, look at this cool thing this guy has. I'm going to have some of that. So this, is, this seems to be what's been going on with Earth recently. Uh, I, say, I say we've played dumbass for long enough. It's about to get up, dust ourselves, and uh, take a nice bath, wash off all the heaviness, and rise again. It, what I was going to say is, it, this this where a lot of people have mo the, uh, the root of all evils, money, or addiction, gambling, alcohol. All these are either three reasons, mainly. It's either the dark ones are sending you the vibration to do that, to get you into a low vibration, or it's your physical parasites or your spiritual parasites. All these three things are attacking you to keep your vibration low so they can feed the energy that comes from that. So remember, when you ever, ever got a message, oh, I could do with going out with a tea, or I could do with some alcohol, think, where is that coming from? A lot of times, it's not you. It's simply not you. They're, really? they're testing your, what you're prone to attack with. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, because if if one is in a high vibrational state, that energy, it's not compatible with the parasites. Yeah. They have yeah. to bring you down so your energy becomes more palatable, so they can actually absorb it. So while you maintain a connection to source, you're the one that's causing the distortion then through these um, compulsions, messages. Hey, let's do this, let's do that. It is pretty much a disease beyond the um, sentient parasites. There are programs running in um, our energetic field affecting the mind, subconscious, unconscious layers too. It's um, 
a lust for temporary acquisition. Mm. You want something nice and shiny. This could be a pair of shoes, or it could be a private island, or it could be a yacht or an aircraft. See, that doesn't really matter. You want the shiny thing, and once you achieve it, there is a temporary and momentary gratification, and that evaporates pretty immediately, and then that object has zero value. And then you're off for the pursuit of the next shiny thing. And that's the disease that humankind, especially in this current civilization, really suffers from. I was talking with a esteemed friend, very, very dear friend about this. Uh, so many so-called gurus, they are in giving lectures on how to manifest abundance while they don't know what abundance really is. And so we have many, many rich people who are miserable as hell. And there's something wrong here fundamentally. So that disease is also part of the reason that people do not pursue um, spiritual growth and enriching themselves and others. So what we are doing here now, this is true abundance. We're doing what floats our boat. We have created the time to gather and share and talk, and this is immensely enjoyable. How can you put a monetary value on this? It is priceless. It also, it also, you start remembering things that you might have forgotten from previous lives, which is good. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It seems we activate each other. Go boop, boop. Oh, yeah, they're, they're by the boop, by the way. <laughs> have you got any dragon stuff there? Any, like, ornaments or anything like that? Ha, ha, ha. I've got a few. Wow. You know, I've got one of them in jade. And I've left it. Oh out. wow! I, I I prefer jade, but this was a gift from a dear friend, so I I took it. I said thank you. <laughs> it is my one off my granddaughter. Oh bless! Look at that little cutie. <laughs> <laughs> the the one you know the one that destroyed my room with a crack in it. This is what I've glued the head on. You know the picture of and this is the. I've had to glue the face back on. If oh, you saw yeah. the picture with the crack in the wall, yeah. this had energy coming out of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so and also, the... I've got one here. There you go. Oh. <laughs> and this little crystal one. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. It seems that you like to add these symbolically to your altar or your collection um, a symbol representing the energy of your bodies uh, of your allies yeah so yes very much so dragons so um how would if we wanted to be really really general how would how could we best describe the nature of dragons interaction with humanity without the outliers and exceptions, generally speaking, what are these guys doing, swimming about in the energy fields, in all dimensions? They're everywhere. Well, the, the, their breath can create any sort of magic you could ever think of. People just think it's fire, but it's magic. It's complete magic. So when you can manifest, if you've connected with a dragon, you can manifest a lot better than uh, on your own with these flames. Uh, I actually, I created a, this is from Atlantean and a portal, and it used to, what you do is you got to imagine a, um, a circle, a crystal around your head. Now some people might say that's an halo. And what I used to do is that used to go down the body slowly to cleanse the body. Now it used to start with like white Gabriel light, but if it went to red, that was dragon fire, and the dragon fire used to burn all the negative Yes, yes. Things you got. If it went to green, it was like emotional. If it went to green, uh, no, if it green, it was healing. Yellow with emotions, but red was dragon fire. And that used to go right through your body. It was like a self healing prop from uh, Atlantis. And it used to go around to the body. And I've done that. I've had that. I've been using that for 20 odd years. And oh, yes. uh, it's, it's like a self healing tool. It is. And also a grounding tool. Instead of thinking of the trees, 
you know the the old grounding method where you used to pretend you were a tree and then the roots used to take all the energy down well ALO used to take not just the grounding energy it used to take any implants that, or parasites that you pick up from the patient or it also used to heal emotions it did all sorts of things so what we I diverted then, didn't I? <laughs> I think dragons are like magic. That's my personal. And then magic being creating change in the outside world in accordance to will. And so they are allies that will teach us magic, uh, strengthen our magic, and give us greater control and mastery over magic. Do you think that would be a good description of what yeah. these guys do? Yeah, Agreed. Yeah. Beautiful. So we've got the function of these beautiful creatures. In a very general way, we've got it nailed down. Magic, yeah. magic, magic. How incredible. So perhaps now that more people are becoming interested in true spirituality, not dogma, we're not talking about giving power away to anyone or anything. Self-empowerment. I suppose it's time for more dragons to come. But I think that's been happening. Almost. I, I think the, the green ones, the emerald dragons, they're good for awakening and ascension. So you connect to them to take the layers off you, because we all have layers and people might just think, oh, I'm not awake yet. I mean, you've got a layer to get rid of, and then when you get one rid, rid, rid of one layer, you might find two more layers, and eventually you, you'd be able to open your third eye and start. You know, people, people ask, can you open your third eye? You need to do the work as well. <laughs> so true, so true. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's I, I would like to just um, confirm this from my humble point of view. There is no saviour. Nobody's going to lift you and carry you. It is very much so uh, the responsibility of the self. Now, there is no shame or no problem in asking for help if you're stuck. Mm. But then once you are unstuck, you have to climb. And so this is what people really need to know. Uh, it's not an easy path. It's not a number of weekend courses that you go sit down and, oh, now I have it all. I don't think so. So there is a element of effort. We both yeah. know this. You have to really work on your liberation, removing of these layers or overlays. Yeah. So, yes, um, people need to remember what it is to be human. Um, our ancestors were hunter-gatherers. They knew the difficulty and uh, rarity of a successful hunt. Uh, they didn't eat every day. Uh, they were restricted to a handful of berries if it was the right season. Otherwise, they'd go hungry. And so they knew the value of putting in work and gambling it all on the chance of success. And that's how we survived. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Now everything has become um, easy turned into a McDonald's version, fast and easy and unhealthy. This has to go. Anything that is worth anything uh, requires an investment in energy and effort and love and emotion and consciousness. Now, if that thing that you are investing in is you, that is the best investment ever. We I, both I actually tell needs. people, if your vibration is too high and you need grounding, get a McDonald's. Oh, yes, no, it works every time, uh, very, very, very effectively. Although I use it uh, medicinally, <laughs> you're going to find this funny. Sometimes I find it difficult to anchor. I'm mm. off with the fairies. My consciousness is floating about. And when I wish to properly anchor back a McDonald's, oh, yeah, yeah. All those abilities are gone, and I'm firmly back in the here and now. Uh, lots, lots of, lots of masters use this approach. So again, it is an anchor, and mm. an anchor into denser physical reality. Mm. Now, if you're doing this all day, every day for years on end, it's going to make you too heavy. So um, the physical body very much so has a part in your vibration. 
Yes. Sometimes if you're too heavy, that's not good. Sometimes you meditate a little bit too much and you do too much magic and you become too floaty. That's not good either. So let's think of our consciousness like a hot air balloon. Uh, if you have too many sandbags, you're not taking off. And if you don't have enough, you're going to leave. You're going to go into space. Uh, so... I, had, uh, I had four events on a row, one after the other, and I had a Red Bull afterwards. And me, my son said, you never have Red Bull. I said, it's the first one in four years. <laughs> I've got to get down. <laughs> hey, uh, medicinal, I think it's an episode of South Park. Uh, medicinal Kentucky Fried Chicken or something like that. It's, it's really, really silly and funny. But hey, uh, who, who, who would have thought that we'd come to this topic of burgers uh, with, the, with the spiritual efficacy of burgers? Well, here we go. <laughs> sometimes you can be too, too high with the fairies. I agree with that. And sometimes you have got to have the poison to, to get you down a little bit. Yeah. That's what I call it. Any Red Bull or fast food is poison, but at the end of the day, sometimes poison is what you need. You know, you want to anchor your hot air balloon. doesn't matter what junk you're using. Just anchor it down for the time being. You yeah. can always purify and go back up again. Oh, mm -hmm. fascinating. So on the opposite side, um, although I want to um, now talking about these denser energies, denser foods, it is still possible to um, bypass this um, effect of density. Mm. It can be transmuted. Yeah. So as far as we go right now, uh, although there are synthetic foods, like 3D printed foods being tested, they're not widespread. Still, it seems everything is coming from a life form. We're mm. eating a plant or an animal. So the process of blessing the food and healing the organism, that seems to very, very effectively take care of the denser energies. Yeah. But what I do, when, when you eat, because I still eat meat, I know a lot of spiritual people, no, you can't eat meat. I say, well, what I do, I think I'm doing it, the animal a favor, because it would have died anyway. And sometimes you can connect to, just say you're having a burger, you can connect to the animals, and some of them, there can be a thousand animals there. So basically what you're doing, you, you bringing in the trauma from the animals, you're sending it to source, and then you're sending that for every animal that was connected to that burger of love. So basically, what you, you're basically doing a favour in a way, you're actually healing, could be a thousand cows basically. So that's how I do. The other thing is when I'm doing water, and I'm blessing water, I think of the moment when I had uh, my children, and I send that energy into the water. How so beautiful. That turns your eye vibration. But lately yeah. I've had a purifier as well to, to well, get rid of the uh, toxins, which is a lot. So. It's interesting. I, I got a water distiller and yeah. um, it works out like a, a pound a day or one pound 50 a day for the water that a single person would drink. Uh, so you fill it up at about, let's say, three liters. And then at the bottom, there's this a brown color mud mm. all the all the stuff it's not chalk it's something different and it smells it's like a goo isn't it it's, it's like, like a goo, goo. It's nasty <laughs> yeah. it's nasty and yet again i think that through that process of blessing the water you completely neutralize the negative effects of it yeah. so so we're not stuck in a helpless position. We have so much power over what we ingest in our own bodies. Mm. So yeah, don't do, be too I, hard I, on I yourself. I add a bit of uh, salt into it as well, you know, like emulain or Celtic salt in it, just to give it some minerals back. Yeah. Yeah. The body can go on for months just mm. on that kind of water then. So the, that's what the water fast is about. It's pretty extreme. And um, if somebody wants to do it, it would be good to uh, consult a doctor just in case they have some problems, kidney problems, diabetes, whatnot. But if one is healthy and there are no contradictions, um, it would be good to experiment with water fasting. I, I do think most of the illnesses we have had are to do with parasites. I do feel that. Most of it's parasites. 
That's why I, I, I mentioned the Moringa, Moringa, Lion's May, Borax. Have you got it? Oh, yeah, I got it. Uh, it's kind of, it's green, so it's think my green screen behind. So, yeah, it says uh, Moringa, and I found the, the good stuff without any... Yeah, Lion, oh, have boy. you felt the difference? It's like, I'm kind of like this, and I take it and I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that yeah. motion describes what this Moringa stuff does. Oh, yeah, pretty potent. Uh, I'm sleeping better. I seem to be a little sharper. Uh, these mushrooms are amazing. Uh, so It is a miracle drug. Oh, a supplement. I say supplement. It is a miracle supplement. Pretty, pretty good. It's not completely natural herb. So. I, I, don't, I also have borax as well. And borax gets rid of the fluoride. Oh, wow. Isn't borax it, a cleaning it, agent? It makes your pH value up. It makes you alkaline, basically. So. Oh. Okay, you got to send me a but, link. Yeah, well, the the only thing is in this country they banned it from edible, but you can bathe in it. So before I get struck off with another strike, I'm talking about bathing in it with a wink. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll send you. I'll send you a video, and I'll send you a a, a leaflet thing. Because oh, I think you. borax and moringa, and even lion's mane, are, are magical treatments. And nicotine patches. I've had them. I think you you're having them, aren't you? Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, it's so much, so much better um, than smoking or vaping. I, yeah. I used to smoke the pipe. Mm. I've got a long um, church warden pipe, looking like a proper wizard, and oh, I love that thing. But it's not the cleanest habit. Everything yeah. smells of uh, tobacco, which I personally like. Um, but um, eventually it's not good for you because of the solid particles that you take into the lungs. Uh, mm. But yes, these, these uh, little pouches seem to be a lot cleaner, mm. significantly cleaner. So it's yeah. just the yeah. nicotine without any of the poison. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I, 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 well, nicotine is supposed to be one of the best medicines, isn't it? Plant medicines. But they, they, they added so much chemicals to it. it, it they've demonized the plant medicine. Probably one of the best plant medicines. So I, I have all four, but I have it erratically. I have it when I find one. <laughs> when I find a, a tablet, I'll have it. <laughs> right, right, right. But this was originally used as. Um, uh, an enhancer of peace. Mm. Uh, I'm talking about the tobacco plant. Yeah. So when they wanted to go to war and spill each other's blood, uh, then the elders would go sit in a tent and they'd smoke the peace pipe. Mm. Uh, so if anybody has smoked in their life and then stopped and smoked after a while, it gives you a great rush and a great sense of clarity. That's the medicine or the wisdom of the plant where they would be able to sit down and negotiate their differences and smoothen things out and avoid war. Now, that's a beautiful gift, um, but now this has turned into something um, that is commercialized. The, the whole reverence is gone. It's not mm. used correctly. There's no, like, you know, the connecting to the mother plant and stuff like that. It's, the ceremony part's gone. And they, they did say... Uh, Friend, France and China did say that the recent disease in the last four years, they had, it was to do with snake venom. And funny enough, the, the, the natural uh, West Indians in America used to use nicotine on snake venom, snake poison. Oh, yes, so yes, yes. there's a connection there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm, for snake venom in the Middle East, they used to use uh, opium. Mm. Um, and so it's kind of like a well-known joke uh, in Iran uh, that if um, a snake bites an opium addict, the snake dies. Uh, <laughs> that It was kind of like the immunity that they would have because of the chemicals in, in the plant extract. Uh, so again, um, tobacco, opium, all kinds of plant medicines. These have been available for thousands of years. People have known about these. Mm. Um, but then once, any, and even, even pure water, 
if you overdo it, you'll mess your kidneys up. So there is a level of toxicity to everything. It's all about that fine balance uh, and using things correctly, with reverence, with a knowledge of the purpose. You know, when it becomes compulsive, it's not good anymore. I, I saw your video on uh, someone writing their DNA strands, junk DNA strands, and I've been trying to do that for a decade, I think. I think I'm on six at the moment not on the 12 yet and people don't realize if you could clear all your dna strands you'd be able to fly you'd be able to create portals at will you'd be able to, you'd be god you'd be like a god here yes. so i've been trying <laughs> it seems that certain quote unquote physical level abilities uh, are trickling through mm. uh, for some reason it seems that the um energy level of our reality is still far too dense yeah not allowing them to manifest but for a little droplet or a little mm. spark uh, where instead of being able to fully levitate you're only restricted to moving tiny objects um, and so instead of massive charges you're left with probably interacting gently with the weather and the thunder. You can't spark out of your hands yet. Hopefully this is coming back as more I've people... Had, I have had, I've had light coming at me, <laughs> the, the way I've been trying to do it, and this is anyone watching it, now each dimension is a... you can tr transfer over to another dimension using the pillars of light. And like our chakras go all the way to source, all the way. So chakra... 200 is getting near source so i travel i've been traveling over the last five years and going higher and higher and bringing in the light from that dimension so when you start getting to the non-physical say 15d and you bring in light that's going into your bone structure and you start getting pain you start crystallizing your vein and that is probably the best way to shred these dna strands so i might be six or seven when i'm really high up to the celestials which i have done and you're bringing this to here you can also bring it to the oceans and lift the vibration so if you ever do it to try and lift your dna strands why don't you lift the earth chakras as well why don't you lift the vibration here because you, you're just doing the same thing so that's why i've yes. been i've been trying to do that for a long time yeah and it's difficult it's a difficult process indeed it is we're, we're in um, a dense reality uh, mm. and the effect of uh, the collective energy seems to be restrictive. Mm. Um, so if one finds a place free of interference, I think these will become easier. And that'll probably explain why many um, people who are dedicated to spiritual growth, they go up and uh, find the highest mountain go up and up and up and build their little monastery there away from the interference everybody's on board maybe they're not all masters but they know what's up and so in those environments you see uh, or you hear of uh, reports of some pretty extraordinary things uh, so we are living in polluted waters um, the, the the effect of doubt and non-belief from the general public, it has a detrimental effect on what you can really pull in. Um, the same will work, the same effect will, will um, occur um, in healing. If it's in a, a clean and suitable calming environment, much can be done. Now imagine you have an audience who think you're both idiots for believing in this, that is going to greatly diminish what can be achieved. That parasitic effect of what they're manifesting. They don't believe in it, but they're still doing it. Um, so hopefully this is going to become softer and lighter as the years go on. Yeah. I, I actually, when I'm doing healing, I like giving them downloads to awaken them. Sometimes I don't tell them. <laughs> I just do it anyway. Because <laughs> that's what they're after. Everyone's after that. Yeah. Well, well, that's that's pretty effective, though. Uh, once that initial download comes in, and the person truly remembers something, then they're off on their journey. 
It's not yeah. something they've heard or seen. It's not a matter of belief anymore. Um, it's just they know. They know what's up. And so then they can start pursuing more clarity and more um, liberation. So I, I love that. Mm. Uh, and it's a difficult thing because of all these overlays that people have. So if you achieve that, that is very, very powerful. I, I was thinking at the end, if we could do Dragon's Breath, and also hey, the bold geez, hey, as well. I love stop, the bold. stop, stop doing that. You're reading oh, my mind. You, you just I wanted to what show you thinking. something. I've got my shunga right here. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Nice, that one, isn't it? I always pick oh, I love best. that. It, the, the form is so elegant. Yeah, and I like the layers. Is that is that is that Atlantean? It could this, be. It could be. It reminds me. It actually, also reminds me of uh, chips. But there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this would be good. So let's do this with the intention of facilitating uh, the connection between the most benevolent teachers and healers among the dragons to the people who wish to connect. And if this is aligned to their highest good, may this do the trick. Yeah. Okay. I'll, well, I'll, I'll ask them also for awakening codes as well. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And oh, okay. some syrup. If, if, if they... <laughs> Have lift off. <laughs> but you hear mine because sometimes oh, yeah, the oh, yeah. wrong oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hmm? Okay, I think that was powerful. I think that was effective. I'm feeling this flow of energy going through. Now, one of our esteemed audience uh, wrote down in I don't know if it was your channel or mine that they brought their bowl and as we were playing, they also joined in. I'd like to encourage oh, yeah. our wonderful viewers. Hey, beautiful people. Enhance this with your own glory. Together we are strong. So this is exactly what we want. Uh, let's... Well, that about the Oricon last week, that's why I'm thinking of doing 
a special group when something like that happens, or when when the dark forces of the world try and create some sort of magical fear mechanism to to cancel cancel it out. Yes, and that, that's, yes, yes. That's what I'm derived to do. That's what I've been told. It's a good way that to get rid of the fear of the world is if we all group together and stop it, basically. You know. Winner. And that, that Oricon last week, I, I did two events, was a five, and overnight it went to a one. Come on, that's, that, that's, that's how powerful we are. So and I know hundreds of groups were doing that, hundreds were doing that. Yes. Uh, and fair enough, we're in the UK, but at the end of the day, it's humanity, isn't it? So. Sure, sure, but humanity are the limbs of the same body for in creation they come from the same essence uh, we are one it makes no difference here there makes no difference so kudos to you uh, job nicely done i was kind of sitting back watching you guys like oh oh wow wow they did just did that oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, well, amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, Philip, let's let's try to keep these regular. I I sincerely enjoy your beautiful company. I enjoy I enjoy yours. You you in me dreams. <laughs> Sorry if I was naughty, if I was wonky, <laughs> if I did something. I, I do <laughs> think it. I think it was uh, an ancient aspect. I think it was. Yeah, I think yeah. it was old times. And if it was on the magic planet, so obviously it was. Yes, so. and, and thank you for returning the shard, my soul shard, from Atlantis. Uh, I was uh, blocked through the trauma. I just, yeah. uh, and I, I, I've got thick skin. I don't mind pain or discomfort, but this was just, um, it was heavy. Thank you for reminding mm. me. It really put me at ease. Much appreciated. You're welcome. <laughs> I've got me grounding stick. Tigers. That's what I eat ground with. Oh wow, man! You've got all these cool toys, and I don't have many. Uh, well, I've got to, I've got to start uh, accumulating. But anyway, these these seem to come. They have a life of their own. They enter your reality. Mm. They kick the door down. Yeah. Uh, like what's up? Here I am, and you have no choice. You see it, and you go, "Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't care how much it costs. That's mine." Uh, I, I've lost all my uh, pendant things, eh? all my shamanic stuff, and oh. I do believe when you don't, when they, you're not needed, you go, don't you? And they'll come back when I need them. So, yeah. uh, but that's also how crystals uh, travel. Mm. Uh, they use us as carriers. So, and that's how they evolve. They find new companions. Uh, some of these have been through hundreds of different masters and so they get powerful more powerful more powerful and then they have more to teach as they have new human bodies human <laughs> companions so i suppose you have benefited each other to the maximum now it's time for uh, new companions and instruments and allies exactly oh wonderful wonderful i think it i think it's a trick you, i don't need the protection i used to do i, I can do it myself and that i've grown and that's what happens and that Oh yeah. Well, I'm a bit sad. <laughs> although, although a crystal or two or or twenty here and there never hurt anybody. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, uh, to be continued. This was episode three uh, of the tale of two wizards. Uh, yeah. May it go on. May it continue. For anyone out there, it's easy to do dragon's breath. You just got to believe. In, intent, believe in yourself and connect with one. You can connect with one. There's loads around us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And most of us have got one anyway. Oh, amazing. But amazing. I, it was amazing. a good one, that dragon. I love this one. Uh, yeah. it, it, uh, um, I'm now bursting with euphoria. I think we did a good job. So, can I get one more little story? This is what oh, yeah. my oldest aspect, a crystal dragon rainbow being said that when our soul or yeah when our soul we were on a gold tree we were a leaf on the tree and the tree was source 
and then the tree leaf. I've never told this, by the way, this is a new one. The tree leaf came off, so we were a leaf. And we were looking, we could see the universe, like the dark, and we went through the dark sun sort of thing, and we actually transferred into this universe, and then we looked or to and, and to Abbott, our, you know, basically beings. That's what I was told. Does that sound weird? <laughs> I, I think it's coming from a very masterful, uh, knowledgeable, mature and wise being that also has incredible uh, aesthetic beauty mm. to put profound and potentially difficult to understand wisdom in such a beautiful form. I take it to be true. Another one. I'll be quick this time. So I heard that this is what he told me, what she told me. It's sh all the ancient beings of fiat feminine, don't we? So she told me that Source sent its consciousness to every land, every planet, to create physical beings. And it ended, he ended up choosing, or it ended up choosing 12, the divine 12, to create the beings that are around now. That's what I was told. So there you go. <laughs> the, you get told some right. stuff, and you, you don't really want to send, say that to everyone, because people might think, well, that doesn't sound right. But if, if it doesn't resonate, it doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. True, true. It, it all depends on um, where you're looking at the story. And so truth comes in many shapes and forms and flavors, depending on where you're observing from. It's yeah. all aspects of the same glorious thing. And so yeah. it's good to have an open mind and an open heart and sense, feel and evaluate everything. Yeah. <laughs> OK, to, to be continued. So uh, hopefully next week, the same time. Yeah, hopefully. OK, good, good, good. So and have my, a good my Sunday. Esteemed, esteemed friend, my dear brother, all the best to you. Take care of yourself. Thank you. OK, uh, bye for now. Take care. Bye, bye. everyone.